Hello everyone, welcome to AI Anytime channel. In today's video, we are going to develop an application where we will utilize the Gorilla LLM. You know, so nowadays in the generative AI community, the developers and researchers are talking about Gorilla LLM, which is an API store for the large language model. And uh, the community is saying, you know, that uh, Gorilla LLM uh, writes or make the right or appropriate API calls. Okay, and there have been some comparison with uh, the commercial models like GPT X. Now that X can be anything, 3.5, 4, 3, whatever. Okay, so we are going to see that how we can, you know, uh, build something, develop something uh, where we'll utilize Gorilla to perform some kind of task. So let's use a couple of the models which is available within Gorilla uh, ecosystem and we're going to develop an application where we perform some tasks okay within a sub process in python so without uh for the delay now let's go and start developing this application guys so you can see currently i am on their github repository by Cecil patil you know uh, it's currently it's it's i think the, the entire infrastructure of gorilla if i'm not wrong is like is hosted on uh, barclay okay like they, they have been kind of a sponsor or they, they have some backing of barclay okay so you can see the edit domain as well uh for a documentation you can go to gorilla.cs.barclay.edu it's pretty much straightforward they have a, a collab repository as well pretty neat and clean collab repository i have taken few course snippet from that collab as well you know say try gorilla in 60 seconds they also have a they also have a cli if you want to you know utilize their cli okay command line uh utility or tool you can use that okay now if you if you read it says gorilla enables llm to use tools by invoking apis and i think it's it looks promising to me to be honest because it helps you in the real world application to make the right uh api call or the appropriate api calls because most of the time when you use a lot of llms you know they kind of you cannot exactly use the same response or output because you don't have a validation in place you know uh, by default most of the LLMs. Okay, now let's let's develop it, guys. And before development, you can see that there's a, this is how it works. You know, the the data set curation that the data set that Gorilla has curated, which has around more than 1,000 API calls. You know, and they have Torch Hub, they have Hugging Face Hub, they have TensorFlow Hub. So all the major hubs that they have catered so far, and I think they are also extending it to other hubs as well. And then they have a self instruction in context within context examples to generate instruction API pairs. So the API call that you will make it understand the instructions behind it and instruction API pairs. And then they use to train Gorilla 7B. So they have a lot of uh, other 7B models within the ecosystem like uh, the Falcons or the MPTs. And also they have a lot of from Tor Torch Hub as well. And they, they kind of uh, respond uh, with the help of both zero sort and also the retriever okay so that's what that's how it works but i will explain when i'm writing the code for this uh, the application that we're going to develop so let's develop the application so i'm going, currently going on my home within desktop uh my project and then i'm gonna go inside gorilla demo so let me just open a uh, open in terminal and i'm just gonna activate my langchain environment so let me uh, activate Langchain and I'm just going to open this in VS code so code dot and now I'm just going to start writing the code for this so let me just uh, uh, write you can see the only requirement that we need for now is open AI but there are other requirements that you should you know install because I'm going to also execute the task within a Python sub process and for that you need dependency so the task that we're going to perform like for example you know you want to translate entire excel sheet for example suppose you have an excel sheet if you have a csv file okay with english sentences within it and you want to translate all of it together with help of gorilla and then if gorilla is responding a code base that contains torch so then you need torch in that environment to execute that code generated code within a sub process right and that's why you need transformers you need torch uh, and we'll see what let's for example let's call pandas as well because we need data frame or something and then we have numpy that will of course will get installed with torch and transformers when you install but anyway so let's create an app.py first and then start writing the code guys so the first thing that i'm going to need is open ai import open ai i i'm going to build a streamlit application for this so i also need streamlit so let me just do import streamlit as st and i need sub process 
to run that generated code within a python file or something okay so import sub process and the first thing that i'm going to write i'm going to write open ai dot underscore api key but just for your information you don't need an open ai api key for now you know when you are okay i made a mistake here by typo is there so i'll just write here doesn't matter and that's what you can find it on their uh, github also they say empty we, this 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 is you don't need open ai api key right now i just say that this they have the infrastructure hosted within a barclay or whoever i don't know who the exact sponsor is for the api course that they are making but now i what i'm going to do here open ai dot api underscore base and that base is you can find this base in the github repository i can also give the base in the uh, description as well which is http uh, uh, let me see genino dot uh, millennium genino dot millennium dot barclay yes dot edu and then colon 8000 and then version one this is this is the endpoint that we have to hit you know genino dot millennium dot barclay dot edu 8000 uh fast api or something i'm not sure what what's that endpoint route is okay and v1 version one okay so the port is 8000 now let's query the gorilla server so what i'm gonna do here this is how we're gonna query the gorilla server let's write a function called get gorilla response and within this you just have to write two things the prompt that we're gonna x you know we are going to take the prompt from the end user now when i say prompt this prompt is nothing but a task that you are trying to execute so prompt is basically the task and i will show you so when we enter the prompt for example uh, i want to translate english to chinese i want to download 30 days of you know uh, 30 days of the microsoft stock data okay and use yahoo finance you know I, i'll give this instruction you know to the gorilla and say okay get me the data for that it will give it for you give it it will give it to you right so basically an agent kind of a thing right where you uh, use gorilla llm to generate that code and let it run within a sub process that's what exactly we are going to do in this guys so prompt and then the model so let's use model we're gonna use couple of models in a drop down okay now model so the first let's have a try except if it doesn't work okay so completion pretty much uh, very famous variables right so completion is a variable where i'm going to store that chat completion okay so open ai uh, excuse me it's chat completion okay chat completion dot create and within this create function i'm going to write my uh, inference params or the first is model so first is model and the second is the message so model so model is model and then i'm going to write a message variable this is not message this is messages so in messages what i'm going to write is it takes a list and then have a dictionary within it so list and a dictionary and then within that we write a role first so role is user because we as you said right it was instruction paired so role and then we're going to have an user and then i'm going to have a content that will be your prompt okay so content and this is nothing but your prompt so let me just write a prompt here that's it we are done with the messages guys so let me just you know come here content prompt and in messages what i'm going to write is a uh, print and in this print let's write uh, our response so our response and it will be within this response and that will be completion so let's just not response just completion let's see what response we get completion because it will give you a lot of other uh, metadata as well you know so we will we'll filter it out the code so print response completion i think we are good with this now let's return the completion choice so completion dot i think in open ai we call it choices then the first one then message dot message dot content that's it okay so we are returning this completion dot choices message dot content we are okay with our try now for accept ex, uh, excuse me accept exception ig this is correct let's just write code equals or not code let's write print uh, sorry uh, i could not 
something like this okay i could not uh, or let's let's simple something went wrong something went wrong okay now we are okay with it guys okay so we have written our uh, function uh, that is that helps us get gorilla response prompt model those two input parameters try completion openai dot chat completion dot create model equals model messages role user content prompt and then we have print response completion return completion dot choices i think this is okay now we are done with this so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to write a streamlit code at least to get started with so define main as we always do and then i'm going to also write if name main main okay and now we can write the code within this the first thing that we always do is we write a title so it is your title gorilla llm api call demo or demo something like this okay you can give any name to it if you want okay let's let's also take a gorilla emoji guys gorilla emoji github or something okay uh, let's let's take this in both the things we can take it okay so let me just come over here let's paste and i'm gonna let's remove this this is your title we are okay with the title now let's have an input prompt this is what we need so in input prompt where we will have an input so we'll have a text area guy for this so it's your text area and okay i forgot to do one thing first let's have a let's let's use the entire width so i'm gonna call it st dot uh set page config so let's set page config so let's set the configuration of the page <laughs> i love stream streamlit right very simple but you know both streamlit and gradio right pretty much self-explanatory now if writing set page config what do it what does it mean you know we are going to set the configuration of page so i'm gonna just do layout equals wide i need a wide layout a okay, simple you know, this container or container fluid or you know it's basically it's container by default if i'm not wrong now input prompt ht dot text area and in this text area i'm just going to write enter your prompt uh enter your prompt below or something okay the task that you want to do okay now simple so let's have an option because we're going to use couple of models here uh, we can use couple just i want to just want to show you that how you can utilize lot of other models which is inside the gorilla ecosystem okay for different tasks so option let's have a select box box sh dot select box and within this i'm going to write select a uh, select a model option and i need the name of the model let me just have a look what is the model name model option from the list or something and now let me look at the model name which is the first model is gorilla uh, no it's one way it's better guys you know we are utilizing the nature right so with generative ai you know you see falcon llama these are all animals you know different type of species and animals that we have right so it's, it's very fascinating to see that now gorilla 7b the first model hf version 1 they also have a version 0 version no you can also have a look at that gorilla s7b hf v1 and my next model is gorilla i'm going to use mpt7b as well they have an mpt7b as well gorilla and mpt7b and uh hf and this is v0 okay so now this is this is what i was this is what i was looking for that's okay now i know these are the two models now i can build my entire application on top of it Okay, so let's have a button now. So if st dot button, excuse me, and let's write something like Gorilla Magic. Oh, I love it, right? Gorilla. So uh, Gorilla Magic, and uh, within that, what we can do? Let's have a validation check if length input prompt greater than zero or something. Okay, like there's a value inside it. You can also do not none, but that is more recommended to for files. so if length input prompt greater than 0 if there is a value inside let's divide the entire layout into two columns now column 1 column 2 h dot columns 2 h dot columns okay i am giving equal weightage to okay let's write this inside a list if you know it's better to do that h dot columns column 1 now what i'm going to do here i'm going to say okay 
with column one, write everything in this column. Okay, for all of my quotes, the logic that I have for this column. So with column one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say okay, if option equal equal, uh, what is my model name? Uh, let me just take this model, guys. You know, Gorilla Seven V or something. Okay, uh, if this is my model name, if option okay, that will be colon here. Now all of my code logic goes here for this particular model. Okay, if option gorilla. Now what we can do, we can say okay result and st dot no, uh, not st. What the function name? So function name is get gorilla response and get gorilla response. I'm gonna pass two things because it requires it. It needs two input parameters to get completed. So the first thing that we need is prompt. So let's write prompt equals nothing but the input prompt which we have which we have where we have a variable on top and the model is model is uh, option because option contains our model so let's call it option okay here we go so now what we're gonna do is i'm gonna just do st dot write here guys you know st dot write result in this case okay now uh, let's run this so far. Okay, so let's run it and see what we get. Do we get any error for this? I'm excited to see that guys. So let's see it. So streamlit run app.py Okay, you can see well, <laughs> we didn't get any error so far. Uh, we call it Gorilla LLM API called demo. Okay. And I, I, guys, I always say, right, if you are not developing it, it doesn't make anything to learn a technology. If you are just learning for sake, okay, let me learn and have theoretical knowledge will not take you anywhere to be honest. Okay, I, I work in the industry, I, I see uh, what are the requirements of clients, what kind of problem they face and what are their challenges. You have to learn that how you can develop something, okay, uh, on top of your learning, okay, the top of understanding is important, uh, depends what you want to do in your life, you know, if you are more inclined towards development then i will write i will ask you to write code and if you are more focused towards a techno functional role where you want to do consulting or more of a, like an architect kind of a person even if you don't write a hell lot of code will help you achieve that but it's very very important now in generative ai to learn how you can develop and it's easy to develop guys but you should have good enough understanding of the technology that you are working with now enter your prompt below and here you can write your prompt and you have Gorilla or something. Okay, Gorilla 7B HF V1, Gorilla MPT 7B HF V0. Let me, let me just write something and see if it gives me. Okay. Uh, I want to tra I want to translate I want to translate Chinese to English. What happened to Chinese? Okay. I want to translate Chinese to English. And uh, let's have the same model Chinese into English. Okay, I want to translate a sentence, a sentence from Chinese to English. Okay, now this is my task. Now here what I'm doing, I'm just writing a single sentence, but you can also pass an input file. Okay, you have to keep the file in your folder. Okay, if you want to execute that in sub process, I will show, but of course you have to extend this app further. Now let's hit on Gorilla Magic and see what it does. Okay. So now it says none, which is fine. So you can see ht.write result. Okay, let me now also see if I just click on Gorilla set. Okay, fine. Okay, it's running. I don't know why it's none. None. Mm -hmm. None because it's not Janino. I made a mistake. It's Janino. Okay, sorry for that. No, uh, it's somebody's name probably or some machine's name. So uh, that's I'm really sorry. You know, I <laughs> I wrote Janino there, but that will Janino. Okay, let's click on Gorilla Magic and see. It will take little time, guys. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna I may pause this video because it might take up to few thirty seconds or something. You know to generate the response so uh, let's see how much time it's taking you know if it takes more time i'll pause the video but i don't think it will take a hell lot of time uh, but let's see 
maybe you can also print the time you know in here okay see you can we got our response guys so you know what was the response and we will will clean this code by the way we are right now printing in st dot right here and that's why we are getting this response but we'll put it in st dot code or something now you can see natural language processing text to text generation this is what it is right now it's text to text generation api call and this is the this is the model that has been called facebook m2m 100 418 million provider is hugging face transformers and this is the, some instructions that how you can run this load the pre-trained m2m 100 model and it's tokenizer from the hugging face the same thing right tokenizer and the model load through pipeline or something then set the source language and you can see the code over here so let's do one thing let's make it little beauty you know through little beautify right to through a code or something filter it out lot of content here okay so we don't need it but at least i wanted to see if this working so it works now okay now let's go back to code and let's write the same thing for you know other model so let me just copy paste here quickly and i'm gonna do else here else and else i'm just gonna write here if option excuse me if option else if option or maybe let's don't, don't write in else let's call it elif okay so this become elif and this will not be here let me just remove this if and let me just copy this thing for now let's copy here elif option and let me just remove this we don't need it okay so this will not be gorilla 7f this will be what was our model name it was mpt 7b so let me just replace this guy here okay this will be mpt 7b hf version okay v not that's it okay so we are good with this so we have written the code for column one now let's write the code for column two so what i'm going to do here with call two and with call two I'm just going to write the same thing if option. So let me just first write an option with call to and do a pass for now. I'm going to write the code later on for this. And also for L if option, uh, excuse me, L if option and let's also do a pass for now. Okay, we'll, we'll write this later. Now we're going to write the logic in column two to only get the code and execute that within a sub process. That's what we're going to do guys, you know, in, in column two on stream lead in slide. Okay. Uh, okay. So if you see the response that we have got here, right, it's, it's a raw text, you know, it, you cannot run this text right now. Okay. We have to filter it out or create a file or something to do that. So let's create that. Why are we waiting? So now we have this function after that we'll hit enter and write one more function. And that function will be nothing but called extract code. So extract code from uh, extract code from output. Let's have this explanatory function. Extract code. So we are going to extract the code from output, and it only take our output as an input parameter. We will pass our entire raw output, the raw text that we have got from Gorilla. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to write code output dot uh, let's something like you know we have to split or something okay split and then in split what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna write code or i'm gonna write code and then let me just see this so where is the code guys okay define load okay here is the code you can see this code okay so let's have this three something okay there's some characters okay code and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to start my code here and then let's have one. Now this will give me the code for this particular model and I'm just going to return the code here. Simple, okay, return, return code. Now this, this gives me the code. So what I'm going to do here in this case now for uh, option Gorilla 7B HFV1 I'm going to basically use that uh, function that I have written on top. So let's let's do that, guys. So now what I'm going to do here in column two, if option, then code result. So let's do code underscore result and use that particular function code result extract code. 
and here i'm going to pass my you know uh, result okay so let's pass that result okay so in this code result we are passing that result now okay and we only get the code part of it that's that's what we are doing so let's have use a subheader to make it a little explainable from the ux standpoint so h dot subheader generated output generated code or something okay generated code and below we can write ht dot code so streamlit provide a code kind of an interface where you can write present or output all of your code okay so ht dot code code result you can also define a language that which code which language is that code of okay so it's, for me it's python so let's write python here okay we we are good with this guy so now let let me just quickly run it and see if it makes any changes And again, it will take little time, so let it be. Okay, I I don't want to pause the video, guys. You know, and I request that you spend a little time on understanding the concepts. You know, so you can invest a little time to you know stay with me, and uh, you can find out right generated code. So it looks beautiful, doesn't it? Okay, so from transformers import T5 tokenizer, T5 for conditional generation for this particular task, which is a translation task from Chinese to English. Okay, now define load model. And in this model, we have tokenizer, T5 tokenizer from pre-trained and we're using T5 based by Google, which is a very underrated model. You know, the T5, Flan T5 or something, right? So T5 based, T5 base, return tokenizer model and then processing data, input text, decoding it wherever required, you know, process the data and then fantastic. Now we are generating the code for this particular model, which is 7BHFV1. Now, what we're gonna do here, you know, also basically, you know, let's let's do one thing. Let's uh, write a f process file. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to write a process file which will help us, you know, run the generated code. So let's let's do that. So for that, we have to write a function here. So let's write a function and let's call this def generated, uh, define generated code, and or let's call it run generated code, a function which is explanatory. Okay, so run generated code. So we have now generated a code, we have to run that code. So let's do that. So generated code, and in this, I'm gonna pass my file path. So we have to save that file path, we will do it later. Okay, just let first write the function. So define run generated code file path, and I'm gonna write a command for this. The so command is nothing but Python and that file path. Okay, so Python and and let's just write file path not it's okay we can give it this uh, c but it's okay let's write python file path okay so this is for command now let's use a try except if we have we can handle the error if it's not executing we can throw a system error or something now result and result is nothing but sub process dot run so we're going to run this file so sub process dot run command and then let's have okay this is fine studio out Okay, sub process dot pipe and studio error. Okay, you cannot see it. Let me just see studio error and sub process dot pipe again. Sub process dot pipe. Okay, and then text equals true, which is uh, true or false. So text true, fine. So we are getting our result. This is our result. So now let's check if you know if the sub process ran successfully. So we can put a condition there. So if result dot uh, return code so if result dot return code equals equals zero okay if result dot return code equals equals zero then we can print a success message ht dot success generated code executed successfully so generated code executed successfully fantastic now we have this and let's display okay ht dot code and if there is any output or something we can put it in the code so result dot studio out okay yeah studio out and then uh, the language we accept is python okay so let's do a python for this okay and uh, if if result written now what we can do we can also write an else here if we if it ran through some error 
so just write an error message generated code failed uh, i'm okay with this okay generated code failed and i uh, just show the error also so let's show the error also uh it's not be let's call it error that's it okay cool and the error should for error let's call it bash because it will give you a command line error for you right some terminal error so let's call it bash because it's fine we uh, to have bash here now let's have an exception also if there's any any exception except exception as e and sorry something went wrong okay and let's let's give that e also here okay we'll see that what we are getting okay from that fantastic okay so we've ran the generated code uh, also so we have we no, not ran okay we have written the function for we have written the function to run that executed uh, generated code in a sub process within a sub process we are going to run this code now just imagine any kind of task okay you have to crawl some data scrap some data you, you can write a custom function for that a logic and you can just ask that task to gorilla it will generate some code of course it is validated you have to pass the input file and it will automatically perform that task for you okay it's that powerful guys okay. so now let's do one thing okay so to, 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 if we have this h dot code code result language python now you know we have to save that file to run that so what i'm going to do here okay i'm going to uh, save this file so let's call it file path here guys so file path and in this file path i'm going to just going to just save it so let's call it generated code and it's let's give a model which model we are using is gorilla seven b hf v1 hfv onepy this is what we are going to write okay now it will save in this current folder and it will run within a sub process fantastic okay now if option uh and we, we have to sorry we have to you know complete that again so we have to save it right with file so we have to write that file and then uh, open it as well okay so with open file path let's write it as file this is fantastic as file okay as file and uh, what we can do as file so let's do uh, file dot write code result file dot write code result fantastic okay now we, this will help us save the file in this uh, current directory that we have we are done with this first from first model gorilla 7b hfv1 let's write the code for second model now so for second model mpt it, it doesn't give you the code it gives you the code in one line okay and we have to uh, parse the output a bit so let's do that so i'm just going to use code result as it is let's copy this and let's come over here paste it code result and so here i'm going to just write couple of extra lines of code to pass the output right so lines we're going to split that code result split let's give a double line break here guys so n and i have already performed this task so i know that why i'm writing this code but i will show the output once i get it okay so lines code result dot split and the next is for i in range for i in range of length lines this is right but let's write a minus one here okay so what i'm gonna do is minus one uh length line uh minus one let me have a look uh, my notebook uh what the step was length lines yeah this is fine so length this looks fine okay length lines then st dot code lines i language python fantastic this is the this is what i was looking for and i'm using tab 9 as a coding assistant you can also use it you know i don't want to pay 10 dollars to github copilot but it's worth paying it okay for i in range length lines minus one and lines i okay this looks nice let's see if we get any error sc dot code and now we also have to save the file path for it so let's do that okay i'll just copy this come over here I'm just gonna change this 7b let's write an mpt here and it's called version v naught okay fantastic and uh, yes but here also we have to make some changes i'll just again go to my note i'll replace this entire thing guys okay uh this is not because we have to again here pass save that uh with the line breaks okay in the python file so with of open file path write as file now what i'm gonna do is for i in excuse me for i in range 
uh, length of okay this length is line length of lines again minus one this is what we did on top and here I'm gonna write file dot write yes so file dot write and then I'm gonna use lines I cannot see it lines and yes so lines and which is I lines I dot strip we're gonna strip this and then we're gonna replace the double uh, the double line break that we have uh, with so with this this will not be that's right because we have to write in a single code because here we have to give a double code okay replace and within this now this makes sense and plus fantastic we are done okay this is correct okay now and now let's run this generated code that's it so i'm just gonna come out of elif option because this is gonna this is gonna save this and i'm gonna come and say run generated code file path let's do that so file path okay now we are utilizing this function you can see run generated code and we're just writing the file path this is what we are doing here guys okay fantastic now we are done with our function let me explain quickly what we are doing and then we'll go and run it couple of times and then i will you know uh, end the video there right it might be a little big but it's okay now we are first importing all the libraries we have to hit the endpoint that gorilla has deployed somewhere you know so we are using berkeley.edu 8000 v1 and then we are writing a function get gorilla response which is available on their github repository i made couple of changes here as an input parameter and then we are, we have written a code function code to extract the code out of it you can see it over here the, this was the complete output but we need this generated code and that's what we are doing here okay with this particular function now we have something called run generated code because we want to save this generated code in a python file and run that automatically within a sub process to perform your task now you can deploy this anywhere you can write a cron job a scheduler or something you know depending on what kind of task you are performing it can work as an agent right you can do that now here we are doing diff run generated code file path you know we are putting a command some sub process some conditionals to check if that get executed successfully and here we start the streamlit thingy okay the title the input area text area select box couple of models you can add more models go through their github repository and see they are also working with llama 2 that's what i heard okay so you can also integrate llama 2 here and then i we have a button and couple of columns in column one we are getting the complete output in column two we are only getting the code saving the file and using the run generated code to execute that within a sub process this is what we have done so far guys right so now let's do one thing now let's run this and see if we get any error okay uh so the, uh, the app is already running so let's come here and just do a refresh and now we can use it to perform multiple tasks now here is the catch when you want to run this within a sub process make sure that you have uh, all the required uh, dependencies and libraries within that environment that you are running because you know it will generate code mainly based on transformers torch tensorflow etc and uh, I assume that you should have that in your environment because we are we have to run that in a sub process now let's do one thing write a, write an article write a write a post on let okay write an article let's for example see if it can generate them write an article on uh, explainable AI uh, keep a professional tone Save the file. You know, and uh, save the file or print the, or let's do rather, print the response. Print the response and see if it's able to do. So let's try with MPT seven B first. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna click on Gorilla Magic. Now what we are doing here, we are using Gorilla as a content creator tool or a content creation tool where you generate some content, and you can see it's. Uh, it says invalid syntax. Uh, there is something wrong. Okay, write an explainable on explainable AI. I don't know why it's why it, why it's wrong. Okay, it says explainable AI. Right? 
okay let's do one thing let's remove this for now okay if i remove this and i just uh maybe have maybe we can handle this also you know if required uh, from the streamlet itself or because it was uh, there was an error of quotation and now you can see uh, it says it's using gpt2 a model which is on hugging face through pipeline tech but it, it didn't you can see generated code executed successfully it generated the code executed okay let me come back over here and show you what i'm talking about now if you see this mpt7b file that it has been saved here okay from transformers import pipeline generator pipeline but even if here we asked to print the response so it's not printing the article it ignored this now but that is okay it at least it's showing you where it has saved and everything and all where it has executed this file okay so its file has been execute, executed you can ignore this exception on bits and bytes now you see here is the file that that has been saved now if you do this, just do a print article here okay if you just do print article it will basically you know also execute this you can execute this you can see it's using gpt2 model uh, the text generation model from transformers import pipeline you know generator pipeline text generation model gpt2 article generator right so you can use this uh, excuse me let me just uh, minimize this so you can see the code that we are getting from MPT. I think we can also, I think I missed this. You can put this again back in a single code snippet. It's like now a separate line. You, know, you can see all of the code with MPT7B. And, but but it's, it's working, right? So now what we can also do, uh, let's try it out, guys. So uh, with next, uh, what we can do? Uh, we can use it for different purpose. Okay, let's, let's uh, use it for, uh, I want to generate embeddings for a simple python file python function okay uh, i want to generate embedding for a simple python let's write code or something okay now if you want to generate code embeddings let's let's select uh, 7b hv hfv1 for this and you can see it's running this is now this is the task that i'm going to perform I want to generate embedding for a simple Python code. Now, earlier we created content out of it, you know, and it used GPT-2 to do that. And now in this case, what we are doing, we are asking it to create a code embedding on some sample code. Okay, you can, you can see it's using CodeBot. I, 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 love, I loved it, okay. So CodeBot is very powerful when it comes to executing this. So CodeBot helps you, it's by Microsoft, it helps you with a lot of coding related problems or tasks like for example, you know, uh, code translation, code similarity finding, you know, code embeddings, etc. So you can see it's using CodeBot here, CodeBot base, it has a load model, it has a process data, it has a sample code and now it's creating the embeddings out of it. So for this it will take time because you know it's it's little, uh, it, it's a bigger model and also have print embeddings so you are executing this right now, you can see it says running within a sub process it might throw an error you know if you don't have the dependency then it might take a little time it might take around a minute or two for the first time it will take more time now because you have to get this code but base within your cache memory right that's why uh, it's uh, it's taking time to you can see it over here it says running now what it will do it will i just have given a natural language query i want to generate embedding for a simple python code you can see this is my simple python code which is a hello world function and now I'm expecting that the code board will give me the embeddings for this code and later I can you know use a decoder model to decode that. That's what I can also do. So you perform different type of tasks. Of course, you can extend this further, this application for a lot of other use cases. You just have to create custom functions within your Python file and write some logics. How are we extending this, right? You can deploy it also in some infrastructure if you have some infrastructure to deploy, okay? And make it like an auto uh, like an agent GPT kind of a thing where you can also define some strict task you can put a cron job or scheduler you know to perform it let's see if what it does I'm very curious probably it will throw some error but let's see if it throws any error and I'll show you what I'm talking about here about code but let me just so so if you go to code but base hugging face that was a good rhyming by the way code but base hugging face and you can see this, this is the model that we are using by Microsoft, it's you can use it. You can use it. Uh, uh, your sentence here. Let's see if this sentence works. I can write okay diff function or something. I don't know. Okay, uh, let's see what feature extraction. Okay, this is for feature extraction. Uh, it's model is loading. Uh, let's see. Let's come back over here. Uh, it will take little time. 
so let it complete and let's see what it does here it a lot it has a lot of other things guys you can see i got my features okay so it's able to extract the feature out of this function so it's performing on hugging face not see where it performs here you can see wow fantastic so we got it here also guys right so we got the embeddings for this you can see the vectors and now you know you want to you have a lot of uh, proprietary code databases okay you want to create uh, embeddings out of it store it in a vector database or a vector storage and then you can also query it out so you can see the beautiful app that we have you know developed in this uh, video guys so we, we built something called gorilla llm api call app where you can put your prompt different type of task where we are using couple of models like hfv1 and mpt7v it is they also working with llama you can also utilize llama too soon and the left hand side column we have the raw output the exact uh, output and then we have a filtered output which says generated output the code okay maybe i can change it to generated code or something and you can see in we have a code structure you can also copy that and this gets stored here also so let me show what i'm talking you can see this this gets stored in your separate file it creates a separate file we store it accordingly and we can also run it run it now okay even if you want to run it separately you can run it but we also have a sub process which runs it for you now you can also write logic in that sub process that whatever embeddings that you are creating it would get saved in a database or a txt file you can also write that logic now it's it's up to you right it's all you know you have to come up with your you know imagination and creativity to extend this further but this is what i wanted to do guys you know in this video i wanted to talk on gorilla it's still not there to be honest uh, but it's it looks really promising uh, we can do a hell lot of things with it i just took 40 minutes to create this application you know and you can see this is what uh, we are getting the output that we are getting it's able to perform it's able to execute task it's able to get right set of code and it's working fine now you can also do a lot of other things with it let me know what are you doing with this if you're watching this video and if you get some inspiration from it and you take the code base from github repository and uh, you can build something on top of it and let me know uh, in the comment box so that's all you know for this video guys you know the code will be available and if you like the content please hit the like icon and i also have an llm playlist where i have more than 25 26 videos on large language models please go through it and uh, let me know your thoughts and feedbacks on the content that i am creating okay and that's all for this video guys uh thank you so much for watching see you in the next one